Good morning. Hi friends. This is Bindu Malhotra once again. And I'm going to share today uh, on the mind, body, spirit. Um, today our top topic is third eye. And it's a very nice topic. Um, and it's, it's quite a broad topic. I can go on for the whole day. But I'm going to say, I'm going to share in a sense what exactly is third eye and how can we understand it a little bit more better. It's a word which has been used quite commonly in spiritual world about the third eye, awakening your third eye. And uh, the Kundalini talks a lot about the third eye and all the chakras. So what exactly is the third eye and uh, just understanding a little bit more so we have more, more awareness and more knowledge about this topic. Um, so I'll just wait for a few more people to join us today here and uh, we'll start talking about it. So what is third eye? In Hindi it's called the Ajna Chakra uh, and it's also the chakra of all the wisdom, intuition, power. Um, if you want to visualize it in your mind, it's like uh, all your chakras are like the lotus flowers and they're right now closed. Uh, the, the more they are, the more you're working on them, the more you're trying to awaken them, they start to clear, cleanse and purify in the energy. It's the color usually uh, visualized in this lotus is indigo. Yeah, it's a, like a dark blue kind of uh, color. And there are two petals in this lotus which has all the impurities. Usually if someone has uh, broken my trust, uh, this chakra can be closed. So there can be lots of reason uh, and how you can find out if your chakra is open or closed uh, is what I'm going to share today. <clears throat> uh, the sense that can, once your chakra is awakened and uh, you're allowing all that lovely uh, energy of intuition to flow in, um, you will start to have more intuitions. This is the sense that works with the third eye. It's about your intuition power knowing uh, what's happening, you get the intuition of what's right for you, what's wrong for you. Um, there is always a deity, a deity, sorry, uh, connected with each and every chakra. The deity that uh, resides in this chakra is the Ardha Nareshwar, which is half woman, half male, which is actually the souls, the inner powers, female and the male powers united. Um, yeah, and it's located in between your brows, the eyebrow, uh, it's just uh, in the center. Uh, if you intersect a pencil from here and here, that's where your third eye chakra is. Uh, very close to the pituitary gland, that's the awareness, the consciousness and being awakened. Um, so the, most of the images or the script, scriptures or even the sculptures that have been designed around uh, gods and deities and all that, shows a uh, image of a third eye in between these two eyes and uh, it's always usually shown either it's half awake half asleep or it's not fully opened it's it's closed um, and this is because we are trying to awaken the third eye uh, it's actually the eye of the soul and uh, the soul's eye so when we are completely conscious of who i am truly and we can see ourselves as not the costume, this person as Bindu, I can see myself as who I truly am. Uh, if I die and if I come out of the body, what I can see myself as is what I truly am. So that's what uh, we have to awaken. That's why that's the uh, theory or all the explanation behind awakening or opening your third eye. Because the minute you are uh, awakened and you have the intuition power, you start to know things much better. So your wisdom, which you already have of who you are, why you're here, what's the time cycle, what's the karmic philosophy, what's the law of attraction, what are your inner powers, how can you invoke things, how can you um, attract something in your life, how can you manifest things, all those things, all that wisdom is already within you. So it's not about the theory someone told in a book or someone told about in a yoga class or a meditation class. It's the innate truth which is right within you. The minute your third eye starts to open and you're working on it, you start to allow all this wisdom to come on the surface and all this knowledge of all the dimensions, all the worlds, uh, about God, about yourself, about your own journey through life, 
uh, how many births you have taken, your past lives, everything comes on the surface. And it's like, you know, you know everything that God knows. You know everything that a sage or anyone you can imagine who in your mind right now is the most awakened one knows. So if he knows or one person knows, everyone knows the same because we all are the same. It's just that right now we are so caught up with the physical uh, attractions and this is also called maya uh, the illusion this is an illusionary world everything the five senses the five elements it's here for the prince or the inner being to enjoy this drama this play which is enacted for our pleasure for our fun uh, for the joy for actually uh, making us happy but what we are doing is we're taking sorrow from this drama now and we are getting sensitive we are affected because we are not completely awakened to the reality of who we truly are so what we do is we try to work there are many ways how people try and open their third eye or by how they like to walk on their third eye um, you can use chanting a mantra, people focus on their breath, they do uh, asana where they are focusing on the center of the forehead. So there are many ways, many postures, many um, methods of how people try to awaken their third eye. Um, most of the meditation you're just trying to be conscious of where you are, asking questions of who you are right now and where are you sitting and understanding all this. Uh, bringing yourself back to the center of who you are. Uh, we have the knowledge uh, in most of the scriptures it's written, you are a soul, you're not a body. and But we still try and relate ourselves to the name that is called every now and then when people call Bindu, Bindu and we are just connected to that name. When we are looking at ourselves in the mirror, when people are telling, oh, she's a hypnotherapist or she's an energy healer and we connect to the identity of who we are rather than who we truly are. So asking ourselves questions bring us back to the center of who we truly are and seeing things in the world from our third eye rather than these two eyes. So that's uh, how we center ourselves and we try and see the world from the right perspective, from the right place. So I'm waving at all my friends here who are joining us. Yes. So the mantra that you can use uh, to awaken the third eye would be OM. That's the mantra. Now every chakra has its own vibrational sound. Uh, the mantra that has an effect on that chakra, clearing the petals, clearing the impurities, the blocks that we carry in those chakras. And it helps us to clear all that. Um, and that's the easiest way, how the ancient way of how it has been in our scriptures and in Indian scriptures about Kundalini, how you can clear each and every chakra. And this is about the Ajna uh, chakra, the third eye chakra. To clear it, you are chanting the mantra Om. And uh, the more you chant it, the more you can focus on the third eye in this place around your center of the forehead. And you are constantly reciting with a long Om. So as you're breathing in, you hold it and you're reciting it as much and you will start to focus on that third eye because you're meditating for the third eye. Now also for the crown chakra, you have the same chant so you can carry on and you can bring your focus to the crown chakra after that. So yeah, going forward with the third eye again and just trying to see what happens if your third eye is completely blocked. How do you know that if it's blocked uh, or you have no intuitions? Yeah. Uh, so there's a long list of things that can happen. The first thing is the inability to plan or set goals, simple planning and setting goals. So many people can start planning and they're very excited in the start, but then to finish it and to make sure that the goal is set and you're walking towards it can be difficult. Uh, people can be narrow-minded. They can be um, you know, not very broad in their imagination, in helping and uh, accepting things that's happening around them they can be very much narrow-minded uh, they ignore the psychic abilities they could be getting psychic messages they're getting messages from other dimensions but they would be quite ignoring all that kind of stuff there there's a lot of um, the intuition power would be very poor you'll be making decisions 
um, but the, the intuitions are coming and it's very poor so I'm not sure if I'm making the right decisions there and then there'll be difficulty seeing the future so it's all about planning and you know having the goal and the vision to see the future so there will be difficulty seeing the future they'll be very much stuck here and there will be a lack of imagination because to see your future to plan and create a future you need that imagination so that there will be lack of imagination because that chakra is blocked that your third eye is not open to allow you to see um, and the setting of uh, goals will be quite unrealistic it would be something which is not practical um, so this this indicates that the third eye is blocked um, if it's too much open it's just too open you're working a lot on the one chakra only one chakra and it's too open then there will be obsessed with psychic vision so much visions coming that they may get confused they may get hallucinated honestly um, that, that they can see things or someone is talking to them and uh, you know most people when they are in the old age uh, they start to get this kind of things and we call them dementia or parkinson or you know all these illnesses but actually the chakra the third eye chakra is quite wide awake uh, they may have difficulty concentrating on simple tasks um, they may have a lot of nightmare and they're they will be preoccupied with their mind and this is more common when people are going through depression this is what is happening that they're preoccupied with the mind and so many thoughts going on hallucination and all that kind of stuff and then people tend to go for medications where they just have to work on the third eye to balance it and to allow it to be not too open and not too close so understanding the hand techniques or the, the ways how you can ground and close your chakras work on each or every chakra of yours um, what how do you know it's balanced how do you know that your third eye is completely balanced so to know that it is balanced you will first have a great intuition and psychic ability you will have great imagination um, so you will know how to manifest things you will be having a great uh, way of knowing with your intuition your psychic and you will be working with your imagination to bring it into action you will have great awareness of who you are where you are you're you're conscious of right now the being is talking through this uh, sense the being is communicating with a uh, facebook live so y you have the awareness of who you are where you are at all time you will have a very good memory uh, you will remember recollect things you will know what to say when you will have a very good memory you will be very sharing uh, not just sharing in terms of sharing things but even your wisdom uh, because things are coming on the surface you are knowing more than uh, people are even conscious about because most of the people are fast asleep still still not awakened uh, and so you'll be able to share your wisdom your knowledge with them the ability to plan and carry out the plans would be uh, very good because you can see the future you can see and you're using your intuition power to see the lo lot of right things your sleep pattern will be very good you'll be having a sound sleep um, it could be that you will be waking up but you will recollect all your dreams you will know exactly what you have seen in your dream uh, and you will be very calm your mind will be really calm you will have thoughts only when there is a need to have a thought uh, it won't be just a roller coaster or a hurricane inside and uh, your mind will be not um, you know restricted and uh, narrow it will be quite open and you will be a broad hearted and broad minded person you understand things you're not judging people and you're not trying to label them so you would be quite broad minded now these are just the ways how you can find out where is your third eye just so that you know uh, is it open is it uh, too open is it still closed and if you want to work on it this is how uh, it is going to help you know what's happening with you okay uh, it's also in the spiritual world it's also called the third eye is also your decision making faculty it's also called the subconscious mind sometimes as in the hypnosis language in clinically we are trying to clear things the blocks that people have emotionally mentally or spiritually we work with the third eye or the subconscious mind where we can 
take them to the place from where the blocks have emerged and we clear it from there. It's a lovely state of trance and in that state we can allow ourselves to see all this uh, blocks that has happened when it has happened and then we can clear it from there. Uh, even in past life regression sessions, I would be working with the third eye of my clients and taking whatever the phobias that has been blocked as a psychic um, impressions that has been locked somewhere in the soul. We will be clearing all that kind of work by our past life regression sessions. Even we can do a regression session that has happened, something has happened, a person is full of fear and all his life he can just feel all that tension, that fear as if they have holded on something and it's everything is tight, nothing is easy, nothing is light, the energy is not flowing, relaxed, it's all tensed energy. So how do we help these people? We just help them by sessions, we take them in a lovely state of relaxation where we can work on the third eye because the third eye have all the wisdom, all the knowledge, all the intuition, all the clarity. So no matter what problem you have, the solution is right inside you. And you need the right people to help you find that solution. Sometimes you can do it yourself by having inner conversation, by meditation, sitting and truth will start to come on the surface. Um, all your decisions are being taken by this faculty your intellect, your third eye, uh, it's also your decision-making faculty uh, and it makes decision based on what information you have fed in um, or as a child uh, we feed in this information by our parents, what they're teaching, by the school that we are in, uh, by the media, the society, what we are learning. So any person that you trust, if you trust a doctor and your doctor is saying to have this kind of medications, we try and accept it. We take it all in the subconscious mind that if I do this, I'll be fine. Even if that is just a, a placebo, it's not even a medication. It's just a normal white colored piece of uh, just chalk. <laughs> I can eat that. and I can feel I can, I'm going to be fine because I believe in that. So everything that I can trust and I have absorbed in becomes my right and wrong list. So we all have inside us a right and a wrong list. And all this information is based on uh, prioritizing what is my priority, what is the decision that I'm going to make. So if health is very important for me, I've read a lot about health and I've paid a lot of attention and I've trusted someone who has given me the right information about what is going to keep my body healthy or my soul healthy, then I am going to make choices and decisions based on my research, based on my right and wrong list. Every person has a different right and wrong list. Now, my right and wrong list can be completely different to your right and wrong list. And people can have debates and arguments on just that this is not right and they would be saying, no, this is wrong. So people can go on with that because you can't change my list and I can't change your list. But everyone is trying to do right from their perspective. From their point of view, they are doing right and they feel they are doing good. So there's no debate about who's right and who's wrong because we all arrive from our perspective. But then what is really genuinely right? If someone says I can kill someone and that's right from my list, is it genuinely right? So there has to be something which is genuinely, truly right and truly wrong. How do we reach to that list? Is by sitting in meditation or just by allowing the truth to come on the surface. So when you're working on your third eye and when you're clearing all those kind of stuff, you are actually allowing all those truths to come on the surface which comes in the form of realizations or it comes in the form of just an awareness, just a consciousness, just a shift in your th uh, thought process, in the way you think and something just clicks, it's like an aha moment, I just got that and you start to change the course of your actions, the course of your thoughts and your energy completely shifts. So it's a matter of what uh, clicks and how you're changing your decisions. It's good to just sit with yourself and take this exercise. If you like to journal your stuff, it's a good exercise where you can just sit down and just work with what is right for you and what is wrong for you. And just question, what are your values? What are your beliefs? Um, even anytime you feel uh, you want to know what are your beliefs and you can't understand how to find it, start asking yourself questions. So if I say honesty is my value, now honestly, that's my value. I love being honest and I, I have been to a place where 
I have I have understood that to be honest is constant it's not just one day's work you have to be honest and you have to do what you're saying every time and that's how I build trust I build trust and my daughter can uh, believe in everything I say because she know if mommy has said that she is going to do that so to build that trust it's a constant discipline and that virtue has to be really very important to you now it can go to the extreme where I am honest but the minute you lie to me I can get mad at you so that is now an extreme that's too open because that belief is now gone to the side of ego and it's no longer a virtue of kindness or compassion it has gone to the negative side and now if you're not honest with me I can be mad at you I can be righteously angry at you now this is a completely different egoic game which which is different what is happening here is the other person has its own limitations and every person has the choice to make the decisions of what values they want to carry maybe this person has told truth in the past and has been in trouble many times so have decided to lie instead because of fear because of past trauma and that's this person's choice so if this person have limitations of not saying the truth I should have the clarity the understanding that it's okay and it's this person's choice rather than taking everything personally and being affected emotionally allowing that traumas to happen inside me it's better we can detach and we can see things so that's the place of wisdom from where you can see things clearly when your third eye is open you can see that this person is different and he likes to lie so you can't trust this person uh, rather than blocking your third eye and just locking it completely you can have the clarity that okay I can't trust this person because he has a tendency or she has a tendency to lie but my virtue my value is it's a very confusing state for the other person I don't want anyone to be in that state so that's how you work with your values and virtues and that's all inner exercise inner work that you have to sit with yourself and you have to talk to yourself what are your values what are your virtues and what is your rights and wrong list and um, so sometimes we are arguing with people and we're trying to tell them this is wrong you can't do it this way and it's hard for them to understand because it's not in their list <laughs> so now that you can understand uh, it would be much more easier for you to have a dialogue a conversation and a discussion rather than an argument about who's right and who's wrong all right so I'm going to tell a little bit about my um, my work uh, with hypnosis what we do is um, you can clear your third eye definitely you can clear the blocks but also the spiritual work sometimes it's easy to take an attunement now attunement is a power that your uh, Reiki master or IT master or a Kundalini uh, Reiki master can pass on to you it's um, usually a three or four level attunements which helps you clear each and every chakra and actually clears the blocks from each and every chakra that you're carrying maybe from births and births so there, there can be an impression or a block about uh, fear of uh, flights or fear of water because I had some past experiences of trauma and that has been blocked in my uh, chakras, in my energy, in my soul and I'm carrying this even now today. So unless and until we clear it and we allow it to be released, it's not going to go, it's going to be carried in each and every birth after birth if you believe in birth or reincarnation if you don't believe it's carried in each and every cellular memories of yours and your DNA is uh, formed based on what you're carrying in your programming of the soul in your third eye what you're bringing in your consciousness is what you're carrying here so how do you clear that so you can take different attunements for yourself I generally tell people that why not you just heal yourself naturally when you have the power in your own palm take an attunement it's a permanent attunement once you get an attunement it stays with you you can heal yourself you can start to clear your own children your energy of the house you can work a lot with that because it's a natural way of healing this is not medications this is not uh, something bad it's your lovely energy from compassion from love and you will do the best for yourself for your children for your family so why not take an attunement uh, I pass on, uh, I have worked with a lot of uh, attunements, uh, but I love IET, Integrated Energy Therapy. It's a great energy, it's really gentle, friendly and very calm. 
uh, people usually would love to fall asleep when I start taking the healing session. Um, and if you're taking an attunement, it's, it takes 21 days or sometimes a week um, to clear it. Uh, the attunement, even after the process is finished, take 24 hours to integrate inside your cells, inside your body, inside your chakras, your energy, just changing stuff, clearing stuff. So things will start to come on the surface and the minute they start to come on the surface, you don't have to suppress it, you have to deal with it or you can just allow it to be released by itself. So there are different attunements and their steps are different. So initially you start with, the, uh, in Kundalini you start with chakras so you're working on sacral chakra and you're clearing all that chakras then you go for uh, up to the heart to the crown and then you open the root chakra so it's all aligning and balancing all your chakras in it it's different you're working with the different uh, auras of your body so you're working with the physical uh, dna strands uh, so physical and emotional is the first clearing then you go to the mental and then you go to the karmic bond all the karmic patterns that we have carried all our lives, the heaviness has to be cleared. And then you work with the soul level and we try to invite the right souls in our life. So all our soul buddies, you know, we have been working together as soul buddies. So someone was my mother, someone was my sister, someone was my friend, and now I'm playing their mother or their friend or their sister. So we keep, uh, we have a group of souls which we have constantly coming back in different roles and we are helping each other. So sometimes the soul's bodies get lost because it's not we are not aligned and the blocks uh, inside our chakras are not allowing them to come back and find us. So when we clear all that, they start to come back and you start to find the right people coming in your life in the right time and you're helping them to clear big junks. It's, and you can call them angel, you're my angel, you're just helping me. You just came in my life in the right time. It could be a doctor, it could be a teacher, it could be someone who's teaching them a course. It could be someone just telling you, a child telling you simple things, which is actually helping you. So it could be anyone and you have to recognize because the more your intuition power opens, you will know why people are coming to you and what they are there for. So your karmic patterns will be cleared and you'll be aligning yourself with the higher self and your chakras will be completely balanced. So that's one way how you can clear all uh, the blockages in not just your third eye but all your chakras can be balanced once you get the attunements once you get the power in your hand you can start to clear things in yourself you can start to shift not just for yourself but you can pass it on to your clients to your friends to your family and that's the best way i feel everyone should have this because it's just uh, a simple attunement but also i would like to warn you that it's important that you take it from the right energy if you feel you can't um, you know, sense what's right and what's wrong for you, then you need to ask for right recommendation. You need to sense the energy. You need to know you're connected with this person. You need to feel a draw, a lovely feeling of, oh, I want to learn it from her. I don't know, I'm just stuck to learn from this person only. And then that is your intuition, your soul talking to you and the soul is guiding you to the right direction. So when you feel a right connection, a right pull with someone, only then go with them. If you don't feel there's a connection and you you feel, no, no, it's not right for me, then don't go there. Because your internally, your gut is going to tell you exactly what you need to do. With spiritual work, it's very important to connect to your gut, your intuition power, and know what is sitting right inside you in your heart. And that's how you can clear stuff. And the thing is with... Um, with hypnosis it's also very much uh, clinical but though we can clear a lot of stuff on the subconscious layer so in the subconscious mind there can be lots of um that's the real self that's the real you all your beliefs all your personality is all stored in your subconscious mind so right now when you're what is what is happening here is when you're listening to what i'm saying and trying to understand it this is your conscious mind you're consciously trying to listen to me and your conscious mind is trying to analyze and understand things. But your subconscious is the real self who knows, who has all your right and wrong list, all your beliefs, all your core values, your virtues and your weaknesses. It is the one who can change anything you want to be changed. It can clear all your weaknesses. It can bring in all the truth on the surface. It can clear even the things that you feel was right but is actually not right and it can drop it off completely. Uh, it's also the laziest part. <laughs> uh, 
it it can do that but it won't do that that easily that's why when people come to us we are actually uh, trusted to get the access in their subconscious mind to reprogram what we need to program what we need to clear in their energy blocks or spiritual blocks or their emotional blocks and we clear it from there so it's a very funny thing but yes that's how it works it's also your protective mind so it has a gate it's your like your gatekeeper it doesn't let any information in just like that so if i'm going to talk about say god and i'm going to talk about an indian god it's not going to go inside just like that uh, if you don't believe in it and you don't want to listen about it your subconscious doesn't let anything in it is your protective mind as well so it doesn't it's like a gatekeeper so whatever you hear you will start to analyze it and you will start to question it and your rights and wrong we will bring it all up and only then it will allow things to happen and things to sink inside your subconscious mind so it's it's a very beautiful part of us a very extremely powerful part of us and that's why uh, the more we try and work with it we can actually change anything that we want to change within us um, be a better person a better human have that inner happiness and joy uh, i always feel that's the most important thing if i'm here on this planet one thing that i want to feel is light inside my heart and a lovely feeling of love for everyone a lovely feeling of joy inside my heart i don't want to feel heavy i don't want to carry the weight of the world and feel sad and disappointed and angry that's not me that's not why i'm here so if there is anything heavy inside me your breath is going to tell you exactly how you're feeling so if you're around people that you don't like your breath is going to exactly tell you ah, i don't like it that's the heaviness and that's the energy that you need to clear there and then and hypnosis is the most natural and the most easiest way how you can clear things the blocks it's no medications it's not you just completely relaxed and your subconscious mind who carries all the problem is having all the solutions so we use the power of your own wonderful mind your third eye is showing us the visions or visualizing it and we are clearing things and it's a permanent work i mean it has shifted loads of stuff within me i feel great after taking every session and i like to keep myself busy i keep uh, taking appointments for myself as well just to keep myself feeling that lovely energy and lovely uh, because things happen every now and then there will be things happening with us uh, you know there could be some me memories that comes up or something someone told me and there could be blocks anywhere in my chakras in my energy and this is the easiest way how i can clear it's a nice uh, program that i can take to just clear all the negativity just the stress uh, the heaviness and with the covid all that fear that has come up it's easy to just take a session just relax and clear it all up um, but yes of course a very important that your therapist should be right and should know how to access because you're giving an access to your subconscious mind so it's very important to choose the right therapist who has the complete wisdom and the knowledge now i love this job because i have the spiritual knowledge plus my clinical knowledge of hypnosis and i can merge it all when someone is talking about something completely different uh, which is not in the manuals in the books in the theories i can understand it because i see it from the spiritual point of view i can see the whole understanding of the whole picture of what this person is saying what is the block or where it can be because i'm not limited to just this life i can see the entire journey and what has happened in the chakras or in the third eye or the energy or the spiritual block or the layers of the block so my spiritual holistic work helps me with my clinical work uh, and it helps my clients get what they are here for um, so i feel great blessed uh, to have that wisdom and that knowledge um, to work with clients and help them heal uh, in the most natural way possible uh, where they are working with the inner power the inner strength now kundalini is your own inner strength it's called shakti the soul power and it's uniting with shiv the source power so it's the most authentic and the most uh, pure energy that you can work with and it's it's a great experience for people uh, every person is different but when the things are clearing i get calls that oh gosh things are clearing <laughs> what should i do so i help them sometimes with my hypnosis work because when things are coming too much you have suppressed so much of anger so much of pain and sorrow 
and when it's now coming up on the surface why not just take a session and clear it all when it's ready to be on the surface so I help I can help my clients when they're taking holistic work with me an attunement and all the blocks are coming on the surface I can help them with my holistic hypnosis work and clear it for them and help them clear it all as well so there's a lot that I can keep on going and sharing about third eye it's absolutely uh, the most powerful and the most um, important work everyone should be doing uh, working on yourself working trying to open this eye because that's your own eye even when you leave this body you will have that eye looking at you looking at this world and it has the wisdom of everything so before you came in this body and after you leave this body this eye is your eye this is going to stay with you go with you and right now it's closed so if it's closed you need to make sure you can enjoy this world this body and everything that you're seeing through the senses plus you can also see the invisible and the other dimension through your true eye because you can connect yourself so what is meditation meditation is always on your third eye you're visualizing you're imagining things on your third eye and you're trying to slowly bring truth on the surface if you're imagining yourself in this world in the beach or on a nice sunny day you're still here try and take yourself out in the space and when you're out there you have less information and it's more chances that truth and your true awareness will come on the surface the more you can be in silence the more the truth and the inner chatter will be too loud initially but then slowly the mind will quieten up and you will start to see visions and you your own self honestly uh, the truth the wisdom the intuition starts to come on the surface so hope this talk was helpful if you have any questions or you want to connect to me please do you can just send a text uh, a message or you can give me a call and i'll be more than happy to listen to your questions and answer them or to be connected with you guys thank you so much hope you guys have a great sunday and a week ahead bye now